as we are about to be underway for round number two from Chicago. Ketter will start things off with the Sanseb Citadel. Ivy with Lana or Wace. And that is a wooded foothills for Kent, so I think we'll have a forest here in just a moment. There is a forest. The follow-up, we assume one's coming. It's Kent to tap some mana. Looks a little unsure of himself. Does have a Seder Wayfinder in hand. Maybe choosing between that and carry at it, but he'll play the Wayfinder. Turn over four cards here, Wishwood Elemental among them. There's also Wooded Foothills, and it looks like a Lanabore Waste. And then a Haven of Spirit Dragon, so some real options here for Kent. He'll go with the Waste, the rest will go to the Graveyard. I pass the turn back over to Ivy. Wishwood Elemental, another card that may be trending downward in the face of Languish. Yeah, I could see that too. It's not quite as hit by it as something like Fleecebane Wine or Death Dealer, but it's another card where uh, you're paying a lot, and if your opponent has Languish, you're getting very little. That's a good follow-up to Languish. Yes. That's for sure. Kent has a thought seize here. We'll see an ultimate price, Fleecebane Lion, or Shasha Death Dealer. A Sorin, along with an Urborg. Let's make that two ultimate prices here in Ivy's hand. Remember the Open Series in Baltimore, our last one before we took a break. Andrew Boswell did win that with Obzon Agro, really the, the high point of Obzon Agro in the Open Series. A very impressive win over Chris Anderson in the finals of that tournament. And I'm, I'm curious to see what Boswell does. If, you know, maybe we get the opportunity to see him in Richmond. I'm not sure, but he's been such a faithful soldier to Obzon Agro. And uh, I am worried that Languish is going to be a lot for that deck to overcome. Now, yeah. maybe only so many decks are playing Languish. Maybe you can live with it because there's only so many decks that are casting it, but that card seems very problematic. Here's a carry at it from Ketter. I'll pass the turn back over to Ivy. Ivy will take a draw. Fleece main line on the battlefield. That'll serve in for three. Let's see if Ketter has any interest in chump blocking. Here's Nurborg. Now it's time for a death dealer. Pass that turn back. Ketter already down to 14. Has dealt himself some damage with Thought Season Land. And then Fleece main line took a hit. Here's another Wayfinder that'll turn over some cards here. A mountain. That's for Dragon Lord Tarka. Two copies of Wooded Foothills in the deck. A, a lot of this is just, you know, greasing the wheels on more cards to put in your graveyard for double effects and so forth. And then one mountain, as you mentioned, to cast Dragon Lord Tarka. You saw the follow up there with Death Miss Raptor, too. So a pretty good turn there for Kent. This, this is a. I don't want to call it a Seder Wayfinder deck, but it's a really good Seder Wayfinder deck. Exactly. There's so many synergies kind of locked in with cards like Murderous Cut, the Dragon Package on top of Haven, and, and Wayfinder, as you mentioned, synergizes so well with both sides of that package, putting stuff in the graveyard and also finding your Haven when you mill it over. Ultimate Price took care of Death Miss Raptor for now. Ivy going to sacrifice Windswept Teeth. Get a basic Forest. Going to start working with that Rashasa Death Dealer now. It is interesting with a card like Language being printed and how good it is against Obson Aggro if it's a deck that you try to move away from or not. Let's see, Wayfinder's going to jump in front of Flea's Main Lion. Because you might ask, well, why would you not the, say, the same thing about Goblins, for example? Yep. Because Goblins can kill on the fourth turn more reliably, and it has haste threats. And Obson Aggro has neither of those things going on. Siege Rhino is its one kind of haste threat. And so it's just much more susceptible to a four mana sweeper than some of the linear beatdown decks that can either kill faster or burn someone out after the fact. Ketter will play Deathmish Raptor. We'll follow up with a carry at it. There's a Haven. Pass that turn back. We have seen no dragons from Kent yet, but that's really the late game power of his deck is the ability to catch Dragonlord Tarka or Dragonlord Dramoka and then return it with Haven and the Spirit Dragon and suffer a lot of decks to be able to keep up with that in the mid to late game. And the cost, the opportunity cost is so low. Again, yeah. it's all happening off of land, so. Kent's able to find a dragon, things get very good. Here's Rhino. Got her a little bit lower now, down to seven. Though no good attacks for Ivy, so all she can do is pass the turn back over to Ketter. Ketter will take a draw. Ha ha, a dragon. A good draw step. 
Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Dragonlord Atarka will take care of the Fleece Main Lion and their shots of Death Dealer, leaving with Ivy with just the Siege Rhino, which does not match up very well against Dragonlord Atarka. And that's how quickly the game flipped. I yep. mean, it looks like Brenna was in a position to to start making some pretty serious attacks next turn, especially if she found land number five for Monstrous on the Fleece Main Lion. And now, even if she's able to answer Dragonlord Atarka, we well, have a Death Mist Raptor that can answer the Siege Rhino, and uh, things fall apart that fast. And you can't just kill the Dragon Lord Tarka because, again, there's Haven in play to get it back. Yep. Time to rebuild. I'm going to start with Fleece Main Line. And now Death Dealer. Pass the turn back. We'll see if Ketter wants to get aggressive with that Dragon Lord Tarka or not. He's reorganizing mana pretty quickly here. He'll play a Courser. Take a look at the top card. It's a forest. That'll enter the battlefield. That'll gain Ketter a life. He's up to eight. Next card is another Courser. And the Dragon Lord Tarka is going to come to the red zone. Two turn clock with Brennan at 16. Hard to pass it up. There is line number five. This is Soren number one. So this will change the game a little bit as far as life totals are concerned. Brennan's creatures will have lifelink and plus one, plus O. Oh. And it's certainly forced to attack with at least one creature. The question is how many are going to come in. Yeah, the, the problem is to stay alive in this spot, Brenna has to attack, and she doesn't have much in the way of good attacks. Looks like Ketter has some interest in double blocking to get the Rhino off the battlefield, but also to not let any trample damage occur. Yeah, I really like that block there from Ken. I think a lot of people would just be kind of in, you know, not thinking too hard about it and just putting the Death Mist Raptor out in front. By that block, Kent loses nothing extra and saves himself quite a bit of damage. Top card here for Ketter is a Temple of Deceit. Looks like he's going to lead off with Courser. Now the Temple. Two triggers. Top card is Sater Wayfinder. Let's see if Ketter wants to keep that or not. It's an interesting card to reveal because that's the kind of card that could mill over a dragon, which your New Haven can bring back. So I, I think that's actually a pretty tough decision if you're supposed to keep that or not. Yeah, I think it is probably worse than most of the spells in this deck at this point, but not by that much. Sure. You, as you mentioned, milling over Dragon is very powerful here. Cutter going to do a little math, see if he can attack again with Dragon Lord Tarker, or perhaps if he's supposed to attack Soren. Yeah, I think he's trying to see, can Brenna survive next turn if I attack this turn and the following turn and ignore Soren? Well, Cutter goes right towards Ivy. She's down to four. She'll take a draw. Play a forest. Ketter, 10. It's a warn of the first tree. Soren moves up to six. And again, some creatures are going to have to attack here just to stay alive because of Dragon Lord Tarka. So here come the beatdowns. Wayfinder is going to be on chump blocking duty. And I it looks like Fleece Main is going to come through. I'm sort of curious about Kent not attacking the Soren last turn. Okay. Because. Brenda, with the amount of mana that she has in play, easily gains it back by plussing Soren and then attacking with Death Dealer and Fleece Main Lion. Unless Kent's willing to block in such a way to try to choke her on mana, you know, put it up in front of Fleece Main Lion and Death Dealer where she has to choose to save one or the other, I think he may have been better served last turn taking care of Soren and then winning the following two turns. Which is something we might see this turn now yeah. as a result. Damage will come through. Some lifelink will occur. Because Ken attacks for eight, and at the minimum, Brenna gains seven. Yep. And with any pumps, it's past that. Wishwood Elemental's on top of the deck. Ketter's at six. Ivy at 13. Here comes another course here. There's a land to play here in, in Land of War Waste. So Ketter up to nine. Yeah, this time with Dragon Lord Tarka, it might be time to actually kill Soren. 
Well, Brenna has access to all the same attacks she had last turn, plus an attack with Warden. Yep. And a bunch of mana. Right. So if it was borderline last turn, and she's going into the next turn with six mana instead of five, which is another Death Dealer pump. Yep, he's got to take care of Soren. Causing too much trouble. Pass that turn back. Ivy. We'll make the Warden a little bit bigger. We'll go up to level one. I feel one tap, and it'll be time to draw. We'll see what's next here in just a moment. I think Brenna picked up a copy of Valorous Dance, and I think now maybe searching for a way to finagle it where. You know, is there a way for me to kill Dragon Lord of Tarka inside of combat, for Kent not to have enough mana left over to get it back and recast it in one turn, and for me to make my creatures large enough or monstrous my Fleece Mane Lion, so the follow-up of the, the recast isn't so bad for me? Well, there's a triple block on the Warden by three Coursers. Karyatid's going to jump in front of the Death Dealer. A lot of mana being tapped right now. There's a Death Dealer pump. Warden's going to bite the dust. Can't overcome those three coursers. Anything else to be done this turn? Oh, just has to pass the turn back. Ketter will untap. We know that Wishbone Elemental's on top of the deck, so that'll be the draw. Next card down. I'm assuming that's a Nissa. Yeah. New checklist card. For a moment there, I thought that was New Altar. Yep. But it is the new checklist. Really card. obnoxious to have altars on week one. I mean, we're still <laughs> learning. We're still learning the cards, right? I hope that's not what's going on. But I assume that's a new checklist card for Nissa. Yep. Two copies of Nissa in Kent's main deck. There's Whisperwood Elemental. Here comes Dragon Lord Tarkin into the red zone. Ivy's going to go down to five. We'll see something else here in just a moment. You have to imagine. No, nope, Valor Stance will take care of the Whisper Elemental, so no Nissa going to be joining the party. Ivy will take a draw. Getting some way to kill Dragon Lord Targa, obviously, or this game is over. And even if she is able to find an answer, that's only step one. It is temporary. Yep, no answer, and that's going to get the job done. Ken Cutter is going to win game number one here over Brenna Ivy. Green Black Dragons up a game here over Obzon Aggro as we get ready for the sideboards here. We'll find some interesting cards here in the sideboard for Ivy and her Obzon Aggro deck. We've got a God's Willing, a Boon Seder, a Tasker of the Golden Fang, two Ultimate Price, a Valor Stance, two Wingmate Rot, two Hunt the Hunter, two Thought Seasons, and three copies of Drown and Sorrow. Drown, a card that might be very popular this weekend. Yeah, I think Brenda needs to be able to interact with Ken's top end without slowing herself down too much. So I like the Two copies of Thoughtseize to that end. I think the Valorous stance is reasonable as well. You've seen Whisperwood Elemental, and of course, uh, Ken has quite a few dragons as well. I actually don't mind Boon Seder in this matchup. I'm not quite sure what matchup it's here for, but it lines up well against a lot of Ken's early blockers. It can attack through Corsair, excuse me, uh, it can attack through Seder Wayfinder, and it can attack through Sylvan Carry Added, which is a pretty nice feature. And later on in the game, uh, it's potentially, uh, essentially a haste threat. I think the one Tassiker can come in as well. What do we see for Mr. Ketter? Uh, Dragon Lord Slumgar, uh, Dragon Lord Dramoka, uh, another copy, uh, excuse me, this is uh, Revelation. One copy of Ugin, two Duress, two Drown Sorrow, two Languish, two Guys Revenge, three copies of Ultimate Price, two copies of Languish absolutely coming in this matchup. Yes. And I think uh, Dragon Lord uh, Dramoka and Slumgar are both fine threats against Obzon Aggro. I think this is a matchup, especially with the Languishes in the sideboard, that probably favors Ken. Ken is just really good at blocking and then can put together an awesome top end. And uh, Obzon Agro is not particularly fast, so the chump blocking really matters a lot. And the top end uh, is going to be good enough to get the job done most of the time. 
Well, these players are going to shuffle up for game number two. We'll watch more ops on aggro and green black dragons here in just a moment. But we'll very quickly talk about the Star City Games newsletter. It's been revamped and it is your source for Magic the Gathering news. Exactly. This list is cultivated by Cedric Phillips, content coordinator, Hi. commentator. So you get to see the best of the open series. You get to see match of the week exclusive deck lists and advice from some of your favorite premium writers like Todd Anderson, Brian Brondwin, Brad Nelson all contribute. And you can catch up on all the recent events and an exclusive Cardboard Crack comic. You can sign up right now for free at starcitygames.com slash newsletter. There's that F word again. Free. Free. The best kind. It's my favorite one. The only cost to you is your time with which you were not doing anything significant with anyway. So, totally true. Essentially, to totally, totally, essentially true. Totally, totally free. free. Yeah. Because really, the opportunity cost of you going to the website is, let's be honest, basically zero. Yeah, <laughs> pretty low. What else would you be doing anyway? Exactly. The cat video will be there when you get back. <laughs> so there's no reason not to do it. What is uh what is what is the card you want to see cast this weekend the most from Magic Origins? Is there mm. any card that you just that you want to really see in action? <sighs> I mean, honestly, Goblin Pile Driver. Okay. Uh, it, to me, it's unclear whether or not Goblins is better than just mono red aggro or Tarka red, uh, because you have to play a couple stinky Goblins to make it happen, and the tribal payoff is basically just Pile Driver, which is going to be awesome in some games, but in other games, it's just something that eats a removal spell. Sure. So I would like to see, you know, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is it worth playing with enough, you know, low quality goblins to make pile driver as powerful as possible? Or are you better off with just playing with, you know, your Zergos and fire drinker satyrs of the world and playing that sort of aggressive style? Your normal cards that we're all used to. Right. That's what I want to know. Well, I think someone's going to find out. Again, I remember the open in Baltimore a couple weeks ago where Bobby Birmingham with that goblin stack pre pile driver really crushing the competition. Exactly. So you have to imagine if he was able to do that pre-pile driver, pile driver's got to be an upgrade over something he was playing. And the only the only tribal payout in that deck was really Obelisk of Erd. Yep. And you can play that in your goblin list now if you want to, on top of pile driver. Yeah, that's hard to that's hard to pass up. It, it just feels like there's it's so obvious. Yes. With all the cards that are legal and the cards from Magic Origins, it's like, okay, well there's definitely a deck here. Now it's unclear how good that deck is and how you're supposed to build it, but it feels very obvious that there's a deck there. Not only are there a lot of goblins to choose from, but Frenzied Goblin and Goblin Heel Cutter, and there's another co goblin from Magic Origins that name is escaping me right now, but it's that it comes into play, make something with power two or less unblockable. This the turn. Subterranean Scout. Those three cards have such a natural synergy with Goblin Pile Driver that it just feels like there should be a deck there. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the Goblin Glory Chaser, it's, it's unclear how good that is, but it does have creature type Goblin. So, yeah, it, it, again, I, I'm with you. I, I really am interested to see where that is. I, I For me, I want to see Jace. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to see. Because that, that's a card where the camps are so split on how good that card is that I really want to see it in action. I'm sure against these, these mid-range to control strategies, like the type that Ken's playing, Jace is very, very potent. It, it would seem that way. Merfolk Looter is typically good against these kind of decks, and uh, flipping over and becoming a little Snapcaster Mage seems very good as well. We're underway here in game number two. Temple of Deceit here for Ketter. Ivy with a Sansep Citadel. Looks like it might be time for a discard spell. Nope, a Warden of the First Tree instead. Another Citadel and a passing of the turn back to Ketter. Ketter will take a draw here. There's Llanowar Waste. There's Green Mana here for Kent. And a Dent Protector face up, ready to block. Mm hmm. Ivy will take a draw. Don't see this a whole lot, but Kent may have nothing to put in his graveyard and also just might need to block. Yeah. His mana might be tied up for the next couple of turns, too. Especially as he, if he has a second copy of Den Protector. Block with the first one, slow the game down a little bit, gives you the time to get the second one. Second one gets back the first one. Whammy. Ooh. Look at a trade, too. Ward of the First Tree going to run into Dent Protector. Dent Protector is going to get exiled because of Anafenza. So that's a conscious decision there by Ivy to make that trade. Yeah, I suppose she has the option of just waiting one more turn. Yep. Then being able to attack and threaten a pump and get a counter on it. Mm 
We will see why that Den Protector is not exiled here. There we go. Yep. There There's a little is. bit of conversation. What if Foothills does get sacrificed there by Ketter? Gets a basic forest, and now a Deathmiss Raptor. Ivy will draw. Siege Rhino is what she's found. Does she have land number four to play the Rhino is the question. Looks like he might be going back to the ward of the first tree. First things first, here comes Anafenza. As a Valor stance. Yeah. And I think the question now is, did Ken actually block? Because it looked like he was making a move to block. And Brenna very quickly cast the Valorous stance. Yep. And now the question is, did Ken actually formally declare a block? And that's why you see the shoulder shrug. And it doesn't look like he did. It looks like it was maybe a little hasty on Ivy's side because the Deathless Raptor is obviously still on the battlefield. Now, there's a Hunt the Hunter, so it's gone. And it's exiled, too, because of Anafenza, so that's not coming back. So we'll make sure that Kent's graveyard is in order there. Bit of an awkward exchange on yep. that turn. There's a morph. Could be a Den Protector. Could also be a Death Miss Raptor. Because, you know, it looks like Ken was about to go to block, and also strategically, that just looks like a spot where Kent's definitely blocking. Yeah. Because the opportunity to get an offense off the table is very valuable for his deck. He also just but, want, might want to say, I just want to get the trick out of your hand. And also too. save himself four damage. I mean, yeah. the, the block's almost certainly happening, but you have to wait. There's a Warden. That's the follow-up past the turn back. Ketter with a few lands in hand, land more waste, a mountain among them. Uh, Anafenza is all sorts of trouble for his deck. A lot of the synergies don't hold up against that card. Here come the beatdowns. There's a counter. The morph is Den Protector. It's going to get back with Foothills. Not all that exciting. Some damage will be dealt here. Ivy pretty far ahead in this game. What's the follow-up of Siege Rhino? Yeah, very far ahead now, because even Languish isn't going to close the door. Exactly. And Siege Rhino is very good here as the last piece of protection she needs. Brenna Ivy going to win game number two over Kent Ketter. Ob's on aggro, and Greenblatt Dragon is going to be ready for game number three. Not a lot of new cards in these particular decks, but they're still quite powerful decks. Yep. And Languish potentially changes this matchup quite a bit. I do think th this is going to be kind of a... Languish is going to be this kind of card that has a real interesting ebb and flow on the format. If we start moving our way into four Languish decks, Obs on aggro, maybe low to the ground aggressive decks, those are probably going to go away. But if we start seeing 2-2 two -two splits or in the sideboard, you're, it's perfectly reasonable to play these low to the ground aggro decks. The, the question is just how much damage is done to your game one matchups. I mean, you know, aggressive strategies, they're used to having to play against sweepers in the post-board games, but that's post-board, not game one. Yep. And it's also four mana instead of five. And if you start playing against these game one languishes, and I think decks like Obson are probably going to have at least two copies for a little while, it's possible your matchups against these decks on the balance just become not good enough. I think so, too. And I think that's obviously a real concern. Because I think when you're playing a lot of these aggressive decks, you're assuming your game one against most mid-range and control strategies are very solid. Uh, particularly towards the end of the last standard season before Origins became legal, I felt like the metagame had so much obs on that the decks were becoming very inbred to fight each other, and some underpowered beatdown decks were flourishing as a result. With Languish in the deck, I think those underpowered beatdown decks may not be able to hang, even against builds of Obzon that are trying to gun for other builds of Obzon game one. Give me an example of like an underpowered beatdown deck that you that you mentioned. Like the Goblins deck, for example. Okay, the one that Bobby did well with. We had Mono Black Aggro make a run in Baltimore as well. That's true. And that's yep. a deck that's a deck to me that if you're playing against Languish game one, forget about it. That that deck's you're not dead. gonna Yeah, that deck's not gonna be able to hang. Yeah, you're so dead. And there's yeah, as you said, there's basically nothing you can do about that either. So you make a good point there. And for the tribal strategies, not even Obelisk does a lot of work for you because your creatures still all get killed by Languish even with an Obelisk in play. The pump isn't big enough. Yeah. Yep. For goblins, at least. It's all two toughness creatures. 
Well, very quickly, as these players will be presenting, we'll be underway here in just a second. We will talk about Ali Antrazi's token. Of course, won the Season 2 Invitational, so as a result, we see Ali with Aiden flying away. Yes, very exciting stuff. Congratulations to Ali for winning the Season 2 Invitational. Part of his prize, this token here. And you can get this token in a variety of ways. You can sign up for any Open Series event in Season 3 or any of our 5K premier IQs, either at your store or at our Opens on Sundays, and any sort of order from StarCityGames.com in excess of $5. Congratulations to our Season 2 Invitational champion, Ali Antrazi. Season 3 Invitational will be here soon. Right around the corner. And then End we're of going August. To, ugh, then we're going New to Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. First time, not the first time back this year for you, right? Is yeah, it? it will be. Wow. I, this late in the year. Jeez. Yep. I've not been back. In, my, uh, my schedule has not been conducive to getting back there, unfortunately. So, haven't been able to do it. That's okay. We're going to go back. You, now, you, there have been a lot of claims by you mm -hmm. about the Italian food in Jersey. Yes. You've never taken me. You right. said you will, in, okay. and you know I'm a pasta guy. We can make that happen. I'm a pasta guy, and yet I've never had any. It's not like we, have done the, we haven't done the fine cuisine run in New Jersey yet. Assuming that there is fine cuisine in New Jersey. Yeah, there is. Come on. I said assuming. I'm not saying that there isn't. I just said assuming that there is. Italian food's very good. Uh, bread products, bagels, things like that, they're very good. Love a bagel. Make that happen. You took me to, what was that restaurant with the giant sandwich and milkshake? What was that called? Harold's. Yeah. Not a great start. Well, it just depends what your expectations are. It's like legacy. You have to know what you're signing up for, <laughs> but if you know ahead of time, it's going to be a great experience. It's like a no that place. You like just a, can't go in blind. It's a bunch of novelty items. It's just gigantic and ridiculous. Like if you had someone who was playing Magic for three months, let's say, and you handed them a legacy deck and said, "We're going to a legacy tournament," and you didn't explain to them what was going to happen, they're going to have a horrible time. They are Harold, going to time. much the same way. Okay. You have to have some experience. I did go in blind. Expectations in the right place, but okay. it can be really good. I would never wish that experience on anyone. Going to a legacy tournament is your first Magic tournament. Right. What's going on? You're dead. Uh, I got killed on turn one. Then I went to Harold's and got an 18-inch pastrami <laughs> sandwich. I don't ever want to do this again. And a, a milkshake that was measured in gallons. Yeah. <laughs> and I just don't feel like I ever had enough information <laughs> in either of these events to know what I was getting into. Kent is going to start things off with a Temple of Malady. He's going to leave his card on top. We'll head back to Brenna. There's a Temple of Silence. Take a look at the top card. Stays on top. A forest, a Seder Wayfinder. Top four cards. Temple of Malady's going to go to the grip. There's a Dragon Lord from Oak and a Death Raptor there, so. That's one of the things that's really nice about this deck. Seder Wayfinder, it's going to find lands for you to actually put on the battlefield. It can find a card like it in the Spirit Dragon to revive the dragon that's now in the graveyard. And Death Raptor, while you like to be casting on turn three, you don't mind it being milled over. No. And it also gives the deck time. It yeah. also saves you three or four points of damage down the road. Here's a carry added, and there's a temple. Take a look at the top card. It's not one single overwhelming thing, but there's just three or four really nice pieces of the puzzle that Wayfinder interlocks with. It's probably the best card in the deck. I would be surprised. Definitely the best facilitator. Yes. Yeah. Really helps grease the wheels for this bad boy. Ketter going to finish his scry here. Looks like he's going to leave it on top. Go back to Ivy. Fleece main line was to play last turn for Brenna. She'll take a draw here. Here's an attack for three. And there's the block that you mentioned. Saving some damage. A death dealer. And a passing of the turn. Back to Ketter. Ketter will take a draw. That is Lanamor Waste. This is a Den Protector with the ability to get back Deathness Raptor and Dragon Lord Dramoka. So Kent working his way into the mid game very nicely as Brennan will take a draw step. Yeah, so far this has just been uh, a great sequence of events here for Kent. Got a lot of mana, life total still 20. Mm -hmm. Able to block, a top end already in hand, at least uh, Dragon Lord Atarka. Dragon Lord Dramoka in the graveyard to return along yep. with Deathness Raptor that's down there too. So here's the Unmegamorph. Potentially a trade with Fleece Main Line as well. So here's a trigger. Deathness Raptor going to come back. Kent actually going to return Seder Wayfinder. Keep going to work here.
Fleece Main Lion and Den Protector are going to trade. Death Dealer will deal two. Catter down to 18. Ivy going to sacrifice. Windswept Teeth. Here's the Siege Rhino. She'll have to grab a Plains to cast it. So she'll go up to 21. Catter down to 15. We'll have back Kent's way. Slightly behind on the board, but in a really good position. Yep. Taking this slow and say he just needs to make his land drops from here. Looks like he might start with the Wayfinder that he rebought. He will. Carry added a Foothills, a Dragonlord from Mocha, and it looks like a Temple of Deceit. Yes, all those cards are in the same deck. Classic blue black dual land and red green dual land. Yes. Good deck building. So you and I, we like monocolored decks. Yeah. Could never do this. I want to put down on my deck list sheet at least 12 of one land. Honestly, I don't mind decks like Kent, where it's, you know, kind of a two-color deck with a lot of mana fixing that is spread out towards the top end, but you have a lot of time. I'm more uncomfortable playing decks like Obzone Agro, where yeah. I need to have three colors of mana by turn two. Those are the kind of decks that I stay away from typically. Another Wayfinder. Turn over four more cards. Hero's Downfall, another Wayfinder. Looks like he found a Haven of the Spirit Dragon. That's the important one. You saw Wooded Foothill search of a mountain. Now what's next for Ketter? It's a murderous card to take care of the Death Dealer while Ivy's tapped out. This was a good turn. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty awesome. This was a good turn. Good for mana, good for board development, good for stabilizing the game. Good all around. I feel like we should see murderous cut in more, more decks as a one-off, probably. If you don't have one murderous cut in your 75 somewhere when you're playing black decks with any way to fill up the graveyard, by which I mean creatures and spells, yeah, normal I, don't know what, magic. I, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Here's Wingmate Rock. There will be a token along with it. I don't mind Wingmate Rock in this matchup because, you know, Kent, a lot of Kent's blocking is on the ground. The problem is, once we get to this stage of the game, Ken, Ken's dragons answer Waymate Rocks so easily. You saw Dragon Lord Tarka answer one half of it. The tough part here, too, for Ivy is you can kill Dragon Lord Tarka all you want with the Valor Stance or Hero's Downfall, but Ken's ability to rebuy it because of Haven of the Spirit Dragon makes it very tough to overcome. And he's got Haven of the Spirit Dragon on the battlefield. and drew a Dragonlord Atarka, so this is easier. Yep, kill that too. There's Sansep Citadel, here come the beatdowns from the Wayfinders. A little bit of chip damage here. Ivy gonna go down to 19. 19 to 10 in Brenna's favor as she does on tap. But she is very behind on the board and Vermaz is not gonna help her catch up too much. That will be the play for the turn. The follow-up is the Fleece Main Line, pass the turn back over to Ketter. Ketter will take a draw step here. Here's an attack for eight. Ivy down to 11. Haven of the Spirit Dragon. I think we might have a morphed Death Mist Raptor here. Looks like we will. That'll help bring back the other Death Mist Raptor. The minor morph game with Death Mist Raptor and Dead Protector. And almost everything, it's really easy to point to Dragon Lord Tarka and say, well, that's the thing that won the game, and it's going to be the thing that attacks for lethal. But the Wayfinders here did all the heavy lifting. I mean, you think about it. Look what Kent returned with the Dead Protector early in the game. There was a Dragon Lord Mocha in the graveyard to return. Yep. He said, I'm, I don't need that. Give me Wayfinder. Let me keep doing my thing. Going to un-Megamorph Death Mist Raptor here. That'll get a counter. I believe there's a Death Mist Raptor to bring back from the graveyard. And there is. He's going to bring it back as a morph. Maybe start the loop here. Looks like Fleece Main Lion looking to go monstrous before blocks happen. So there's a chump block there, a Death Mist Raptor here. And we can't forget about that token that's attacking. Yeah. Looks like Wayfinder's going to jump in front of that. And this puts Ken in position to attack back for lethal. Yep. Great spot to be in. Ken are going to untap very quickly. He will take a draw. And 
And so long as he does the math right, and I think Ivy already notices it, that's going to get the job done. Kent Ketter is going to win this match over Brenna Ivy. Two games to one. Green Black Dragons will take care of Obzon Agro. As I mentioned right at the top, not new decks really, not a lot of new content, but still both pretty potent. It just seems like a very good matchup for Ketter. When I talked to Andrew Boswell, uh, he's played Obzon Agro to a lot of success, including an Open Series win in Baltimore recently. He said his, his strategy for...